everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Miata MX-5 and we're going to dive into the history and the 2021 Mazda Miata MX-5. So let's go all the way back to 1983 when Bob Hall, working for Motor Trend as a teenager and his dad being a lover of British sports cars with convertible tops, finally gets the opportunity to go back to Japan because he just had a job in Japan working for a Japanese car magazine and he knows how to speak Japanese. So Motor Trend sends him back to Japan to meet with Kenichi Yamamoto in the boardroom in front of designers, engineers, and the man himself, Kenichi Yamamoto, the head of research and development at Mazda in Hiroshima, brings up the idea, hey, why don't we take the Familia 323 powertrain and stick a lightweight convertible body on that bad boy and it'll be just like the old British coupes with the convertible tops and you can drive those things on windy roads all day. Hours go by, they discuss it in the meeting room, that's a good idea, blah 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 blah. Time goes by, they go to dinner, and at dinner, Bob Hall and Kenichi Yamamoto don't really talk about the car so much. But before they leave, Bob Hall brings it up one more time. Kenichi Yamamoto kind of puts it off a little bit, and Bob Hall says, before you squash this idea, you need to go test drive a Triumph Spitfire, because those things are bad to the bone on windy roads. And so Kenichi Yamamoto does go drive a Triumph Spitfire, and he falls in love with the thing. Falls in love with it. Opening his eyes to the possibilities of what Bob Hall was talking about. A low, kind of low horsepower car, but it's super lightweight and handles on rails. That would be a super fun car to add to the collection. Kenichi Yamamoto says, sure, we'll do this thing, but we got to do it the right way. we got to send it through all the processes. So you get the OGG program, which stands for Offline 55. The offline means that it's just a prototype. Nobody's ever going to see this thing. The only people that are seeing this are engineers and designers, and they have to have a 55% approval, which is where the 55 comes from, to pass this thing on to the pre-production prototype. So they do the designs. Tokyo comes up with two designs. One is a front-wheel drive, front-engine configuration. The other one is a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive configuration. Whereas over in the States, the third division, <laughs> uh, they come up with the they come up with a front engine rear wheel drive car and boom it's sold gets their gets the approval rating and we're on to the races so they come up with they have to come up with a pre-production prototype model but they're really busy in the 80s so they have to hire an outside company from england iad to work with the engineers in the united states to come up with a pre production prototype model and so they do this by taking the rx7 chassis the familiar 323 uh drivetrain and they make a lightweight convertible top car like you've seen before on the roads it's red with a black top so after that yoshihiko harai in 1986 gets tasked with being the project program manager of taking this pre-prototype model and making a pre-production prototype model which is no easy feat because they're not going to use all the same configurations they use in the prototype as we know even when Ford and Chevy come out with a prototype the prototype is not going to be what you see you're not going to get everything that the prototype has when it goes into mass production so there was only one rule that Yoshihiko Harai had, and that was to never compromise on quality or engineering. He's the one that came up with the double wishbone suspension. He's the one that came up with the 50-50 weight ratio. He's the one that came up with the lightweight materials, and he's the one that came up with the low center of gravity. Those four things are still true to this day in 2021. After he comes up with the pre-production model, he presents it to a private audience of 245 engineers and executives from Mazda for approval to produce this thing. It takes them two years to go through this whole process, and then it's finally publicly debuted in Chicago in 1989. And the rest, as you know it, is history. 
people throw LS's in these things. People do all these types of modifications to them. They're super fun cars, and they're cheap. They're dirt cheap. So, the perfect starter car for any car enthusiast, unless you're tall. Then I'm sorry, you're probably not going to fit. So, unless you like driving with the top down. Diving into the 2021 Mazda Miata MX-5, they maintained all four of his wishes. They still have the double wishbone, they still have the 50-50 weight ratio, meaning there's the same amount of weight over the front axles as there is over the rear axles. Since it's a front engine car, they had to push the motor as far back into the engine compartment as they possibly could to obtain this. The car only weighs 2,400 pounds wet, which means it has all of its fluids in it. 2,400 pounds with full antifreeze, full windshield washer fluid, diff, trans, all brake fluid. All the fluids are in the car, even gas, full tank gas. Four, 2,400 pounds. That is, that is about 600 pounds more than a Yugo that got blown off of the Mackinac Bridge. So, say what you want. But you can put any power plant in that car and it would be fun to drive. So now on to the trims and models of the car. There's only three trims in 2021. There's the Sport, the Club, and the Touring. The Sport comes with 195 wide tires, 16 inch tall tires, and does come with the same powertrain as all three trims. A two liter dual overhead cam, six speed transmission, manual and automatic. And it comes with 181 horsepower, 151 foot-pounds of torque, which is going to be a pretty fun thing to drive in. Granted, it's not fast, but like I've said in my past videos, it's way more fun to drive a slow car fast than it is to drive a fast car kind of fast. So the pricing of these things, the Sport comes in around 27000 the Club comes around 30000 and the Grand Touring comes around 32000 The main difference between the Touring and the Club is going to be your automatic headlights, auto brights, auto dimming, uh, your interior, you're going to have the auto dimming uh, rear view mirror, you're going to have automatic climate control, and that's about it. There's really not that much of a difference between the club and the Grand Touring, that's, what that, that's why there's only a $2,000 difference in the pricing. But, the club, on the other hand, is the only trim that comes with an additional option from Mazda. And it's $4,500, it gets you Brembo brakes, it gets you BBS wheels, Corbo seats, and it gets you an aero package. For $34,500, you are tearing up your local track on the weekends. And like I said, between the Sport and the Club, there's really no difference. The only big, huge difference there is between the Sport and the Club is going to be the limited differential. And you get that in the Grand Touring too. But between the Sport, the Sport does not have a limited differential. But the Club, on the other hand, has a limited diff, 6-speed transmission, 181 horsepower, 151 foot-pounds of torque, just like the rest of them. But it's just, it's just, it's, you put Corbo seats in it with an aero package, and BBSs, and Brembos, and you have got the total machine, and I really want one now. <laughs> I've started to come, that's the problem with these videos, is every video that I do, I kind of want the car I'm doing. Like, whatever car I'm talking about, I kind of want it now. So... That's cool. But anyway, if you liked the video, I hope you hit the thumbs up button. If, let me know in the comments below if I missed anything that you specifically want to know. And I'll try to try my best to answer you in the comments. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. And have a great day. Peace.